Turn in your King James Bible to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23. I want to talk to you today about when God forgets. You say, well, that doesn't really make much sense. How could a God that is omnipotent, that knows everything, how could he be forgetful? There's different ways to define the word forget. Okay? And the way that it's going to appear in the context here that we're talking about, it's when it's not that God just had a you know senior moment or something as they say or he's you know got some Alzheimer's happen in there or some other kind of no that's not it God forgets because he gets sick and tired of somebody um, you'll see that in your life as a Christian you'll get to a point where you've witnessed to a friend or family member or whatever else and they're just constantly arguing they're making fun of you putting you down and you just eventually just your spirits broken you just say oh you know what just forget it this, I forget I even said anything to you about it, okay? Goodbye. And you walk away. That's the feeling that God has with people. Many times. Nations turn against God and God says, you know what? I'm going to forget you. Let's look here at our text. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 35. Thus shall ye say every one to his neighbor and every one to his brother, What hath the Lord answered and what hath the Lord spoken? And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more. For every man's word shall be his burden, for ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts our God. Uh, hey, Brother Brian, do you study the Greek and the Hebrew? What do you think a Greek word of this thing? I don't have to pervert the words of the living God. I already have a perfect book, the King James Bible. Why would I waste my time trying to get deeper meanings or other meanings or it could actually be written this way and whatever else? I'm not going to pervert the words of God. You see, if I stand here before you out there, the world, and I walk out in public and I have this King James Bible as my standard, this is I believe this is God's perfect word, then how could I change it? It's so simple. It's such a logical standard. You know, the scriptures, the King James Bible. If I call it God's word, then I can't correct it. Otherwise, that proves I'm smarter than God or that I was lying. Such a simple thing there. But people nowadays... Hey, it's, um, I think a better rendering would be this, and I think a better rendering would be that. Oh, so the King James Bible is not your standard? No. What is? Uh, well, you know, I like any version. Oh, well, which one's your standard? Well, I don't really have one. Well, then the Greek or the Hebrew, right? Well, yes, I prefer this type of text, the Texas Receptus. I prefer the Nestle's text, which edition, which, you know. And you get right down to it, it's just that person. Their own word is what is their standard. And when you get to that point in time, God forgets you. Let me show you. Verse 37. Thus shalt thou say to the prophet, What hath the Lord answered thee? And what hath the Lord spoken? But since ye say the burden of the Lord, therefore thus saith the Lord, because ye say this word, the burden of the Lord, and I have sent unto you, saying ye shall not say the burden of the Lord. This is what the Lord cares about, whatever, the, his burden there. I'm going to tell you what God wants for you today from my incredible amount of wisdom that I have from studying the Greek and the Hebrew and the original languages. See, and God's saying, no, no, I told you. I told you what I wanted, this King James Bible. You rejected it. You perverted it. Verse 39, Therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you and I will forsake you and the city that I gave you and your fathers and cast you out of my presence and I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten isn't that interesting when God gets sick and tired of somebody he says I'm going to forget you but your destruction is going to be so bad that it won't be forgotten Hmm. America is going to fall as a nation. I've been saying that for a while. I'm giving you prophecy. America will be destroyed as a nation. Period. It's just the way it is. Why? Because people in this country turn their backs on God. Especially those who profess to be saved. They turn their back on God. They turn their back on this beloved book right here. This is the book that built America. Don't even tell me, well, no, Texas Receptus or the whatever... King James Bible built this country. For many years, people called this book the good book. Even the lost knew it. They knew what this book was. 
this was the foundation for this once great nation. And now, how many people even believe it anymore? Still available in dollar stores or dollar twenty-five stores, which they are now because of inflation. Uh, if you haven't heard about that, that's what's going on there. But uh, still available. You get them cheap. The book that built this nation. Nah, yeah, I'll just pervert that book. Change that book. God says, okay, I'm going to forget you. I'm going to forsake you. I'm going to pull back my hand of blessing from this nation. And it's going to be so bad that it'll never be forgotten. It will go down in the history books as one of the worst nation, national collapses, or whatever you want to call it. One of the worst empires to fall ever. And you look at America right now and all the problems that this nation has and all the, just, it's a, just a ticking time bomb. And when it explodes, it's going to fall apart. As I've shown, a um, military website years ago predicted that by 2025, there'd be a three quarter, 75% die off in America. Only 25% would be left. Uh, that's, you know, less than three years away. Two and a half years away essentially. We're you know, here and about ready to tip into June. That's the sixth month. Two and a half years away. Hmm. God's going to forget this nation because God is sick and tired of trying to deal with these people. Psalm 13. See, where does that leave us, Brother Brian? I haven't forgotten the book. I love this book. I love the Word of God. I'm scared for this nation. I'm, I'm just scared of what's going to happen and the rough times that are coming. Yeah, I understand. But let's see what the Bible has to say about it. What should your prayer be? Psalm 13, verse 1 through 5. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? Do you ever feel like the Lord's forgotten you? I mean, really, seriously, with all that's going on, it just seems like your prayers aren't being answered. Just like the Lord's just kind of pushing you off into a room. Hey, Dad, I have some business to handle. Go up to your room. Well, I'd like to be down at, up to your room. You're up there saying, I sure wish I knew what was going on. You know, how do I prepare for the future, Lord? What do I do about a career? Or what do I do about food or... Where should I move? What should I do? Would it? Just hold on. <laughs> you feeling that way? Mm -hmm. Verse 2. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? Oh, that doesn't line up with modern Christianity, does it? Oh, you have daily sorrow in your heart? Oh, we have special classes. And, and we, you know what? We have a doctor that comes here to this church, and you can go there to his special practice, and he can give you special pills that will help you to not have daily sorrow in your heart. You get to be a Teletubby just walking around going, hee, hee. <laughs> happy, happy, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah. How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Hey, the nation's falling apart. You know what? It would be a neat thing to have them listening to up in heaven here's america summer of 2022 which probably will be there you know when things are really going to start falling apart food shortages people in the grocery stores where's the food i need food ah! out in the parking lot people are beating each other up some guy's got a loaf of bread and somebody shoots him in there killing and death and all kinds of stuff and there's these people breaking into this house at night and screaming, call 911, please, get on the ground, get on the ground. Lord's up there hearing all that, and all of a sudden he hears somebody down there singing, 
I will sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love to me. That's the way it's supposed to be. You know one of the hardest things to do as a Christian is to sing praises to the Lord when you're in depression. It's really hard. I don't know if you've ever gone through that, but if you haven't, you will. You will. You're feeling sick. Things are falling apart. Get the hymn book out. <laughs> are you kidding me right now? Get the hymn book out. Wouldn't that be a neat thing? Nations falling apart and there's bombs going off and things blowing on fire and whatever else. And let's just get the hymn book out. Let's sing a hymn here. <laughs> number 321. Number 321. Everybody turn your hymn book to number 321. <laughs> you want the Lord to not forget you? Sing praises to Him when things get rough. It's easy to praise the Lord when things are going good. But when things get rough... That's when it counts. Lamentations 5. It's funny, you know, I had one of you in the comments who wrote and you said, you know, somebody was saying, uh, why is he always reading from the Old Testament? Why is he always reading from the Old Testament? Oh, I don't know, because the uh, New Testament says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Psalms? What were we just in? Psalms. The things that are written aforetime are written for our learning. Lamentations 5, or, yeah, 5 or 17 through 22. For this our heart is faint, for these things our, eye, our eyes are dim, because of the mountain of Zion, which is desolate, the foxes walk upon it. Thou, O Lord, remainest forever, thy throne from generation to generation. Wherefore dost thou forget us forever, and forsake us so long time? Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. But thou hast utterly rejected us. Thou art very wroth against us. And he was with Israel. And um, he will be with America very soon. But I will say this. We have a greater promise than they had back then. I'm part of the body of Christ. Bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh, you know. You are too. So uh, that's a pretty good thing there. But the uh, Lord's still going to destroy this nation. Hosea 4. Go towards the New Testament. You might have to pause it if you're newly saved. You don't know where Hosea is at. But very important verse coming up here, so you definitely need to turn to it. Hosea chapter 4. Isaiah 4, verses 1 through 6. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the Bible says. By swearing and lying and kill, killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out, and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish, with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. What an amazing verse. And how true is it today? How many times have we seen these massive die-offs? They get the 5G towers. Oh, we're just going to test fire them in the area. And all these little birds dropping dead and things. And, and uh, fish die-offs and animal die-offs. And we don't know what's going on. It's, a, it's some kind of weather forecast thing. It's a, as a, you know, El Nino or derecha or some kind of, you know, global warming, carbon footprint, whatever. <laughs> they don't have a clue. Well, actually, they do. Most of them do. But they just reject where they can get the clue. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. 
My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest. To me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. God says, I'm going to forget your children. I'm going to forget about you and forsake your land and everything else. Why? Because you put down the book. You despised your birthright. The freedoms and the liberty and everything else that we had that came from this Bible here are God-given rights. They're unalienable. You can't have people put liens on these and legal things. And Well, I, sorry, we can. that was good before, but now we can't. It's my God-given rights that are written out in this book right here. Oh, I don't need the book. Okay, then you don't need the rights that God gave you. You understand how that works? Hey, let's reject the Bible. Okay, then you don't get the rights that go along with it. Should be fairly obvious. Go to Genesis chapter 41. Genesis 41. Genesis 41, we'll begin in verse 25. We'll see some more things about forgetting here. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. I thought this would be another good thing to talk about forgetting. Here we'll see about this here in just a minute. But uh, some things that are here written in the scriptures, God is about to do to this nation, to America. And a lot of other countries too, by the way. It's not just America that's facing the judgment of God. Um, let's look at this. Um, okay, verse 26. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them after seven years, and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. Have we had a lot of great plenty in our different nations out there, be it the UK or Canada or America or Germany or Australia or whatever? We've had a lot of good years in the past. We certainly have. Verse 30, And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that fat famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. So it's a different type of forgotten there. But what have we been reading? God says, I'll forget you and I'll forsake your land. It's going to get so bad when God forsakes the land, people will forget. They're going to say, wow, I can't even remember what it was like back in the past when we actually had food and when God's blessing was here. Hmm. Psalm 10. Well, I don't agree with you, Brother Brian. I don't agree with you. I, I think things are going to work out just fine. I think it's all just doom and gloom, conspiracy stuff. We'll see. We will see. Food factories being destroyed. Uh, can't get fertilizer made. Farmers aren't planting crops. It's okay, though. You know, McDonald's will always be there or something, right? Psalm 10, 1 through 12. See, the preachers that don't love you, they're just going to tell you, they'll speak, speak smooth things to you, tell you things are getting better, make sure to send your 10% tithe, the whole deal, you know. Mm -hmm. Preachers that actually love you and actually care about you are the ones like myself that warn, you know. I'm not trying to make merchandise of you. I don't monetize my channel. All right. You want to donate to the ministry here? Fine. If you don't, well, it's between you and God, whatever. But uh, people get so upset about my attitude, but, you know, I'm trying to warn people. 
The other preachers aren't. Psalm 10, 1 through 12. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? We already know why. We've been going through all the scriptures to talk about it. God forgets them, just says, you know what, forget it. Just forget you people. I'll forsake you, your land. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Did you know that over 200, I think it was over 280 some new billionaires were created during the pandemic? Did you know that? I think it was one, if you work it out, it's something like one every 30 minutes or something crazy uh, for a while or something for some time frame. Crazy. What was the pandemic? Well, it was a lot of different things, but one of the things it was, it was redistribution of wealth. How many businesses were shuttered? Oh, but we can get loans and we can get money, bailout money given to us and this, this, this. Yeah, a whole bunch of new billionaires were created. Why? Because when God judges, judges a nation, it says, For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous. The covetous people were blessed. And what's the Bible say? Whom the Lord abhorreth. God abhors these people the Bill and Melinda Gates and the types like that and all these different people out there that are getting rich off of other people's suffering. heard something here recently in some of the economic stuff that I studied and, and the one guy said that real estate is now becoming a stock. <laughs> it's just an investment. The big uh, hedge funds and big uh, real estate investment things and whatever, they're just buying and selling properties and oh people are getting hurt people are being homeless because of what we're doing hey as long as i'm making money i don't care it's now an investment i mean it always was somewhat of an investment but now hey we can manipulate the market the stock market up and down and the housing thing and every time it goes up it's smashing people at the top it's they're getting destroyed financially it goes down and it smashes people they're out on the street but the big guys they don't care they could care less Verse 4, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Amen to that one. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that are involved in fraud, you know. Guys that artificially inflate their channels and they make money from the filthy lucre and everything else. Yeah, they like fraud. They like to do that. Uh, but his, his mouth is full of cursing. You know, I'm getting real sick and tired of these wicked heathen with their cursing. I mean, there was a time when you just people in, just didn't use the F word. Only the very foulest, most, most disgusting people. Now it's just, it's part of everyday language, I guess, apparently. You know, you go out in public, you hear it at the grocery store, you hear it at, at hardware stores and wherever else, people using the F word. Disgusting. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. <laughs> all these different invest in, investment guys and the bankers and all these other stuff, and a lot of these wicked realtors, by the way, the real estate stock brokers, these guys are out there. Oh, no, better, never been a better time to buy. Never mind the fact that, you know, property tax rates are going up because of this inflated market thing and a lot of people can't afford it. And interest rates are going up and they're set to go up half a percentage point every month now for quite a few months, probably till it hits 7% interest rate and the wages aren't going up, but the prices of houses are continuing to go up. But hey, now's the time I sh I'd like to get you into a house. Right now's the time to buy, friend. Right. Do they even care? What are they doing? Um, his eyes are privily set against the poor. If you are in debt up to your eyeballs, you're poor. If you're debt free, you're rich. A lot of these people out there, oh, they might have a million dollars worth of, of stuff, but it's liabilities. It's not assets. A liability is something you owe the money to. Okay? 
An asset is, no, it's all paid for. I actually own it. People don't get the difference between that. Verse 9. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. <laughs> kind of funny again, you know, there's a lot of internet scamming and whatever else. Uh, these wicked men, they draw the poor into their net. All the internet scams and everything that go on. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He hath said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. You know what's going to explode? All around it already is. Crime. What type of crime though? Theft. Theft. Catalytic converter theft is uh, just off the charts right now. Palladium, one of the precious metals that's inside a catalytic converter. It's up, I think, 80% or something like this. People are going out and they're stealing catalytic converters. Do you care about the family that you just cut it off of? The family that barely has any money and they use that vehicle to go, the father uses it to go to work and they're trying to, you know, use it to pay bills and things. They have to go to the grocery store. Oh, now they're going to have to spend a thousand, two, three thousand dollars, whatever else to get that catalytic converter, you know, fixed. Some of these newer vehicles, you cut the catalytic converter off, it makes the computer system go wacky in the vehicle and it destroys the vehicle. But does the thief care? No, he doesn't care. Why? Because he thinks God's forgotten. In his mind, he says, there is no God. This book doesn't mean anything. Atheism. I mean, what is atheism? Atheism is a belief that there is no God. A, no, theism, God. There's no God. That's what it is. Oh, it's not a religious belief. Oh, of course it's a religious belief. Of course it is. These people dedicate their whole life to proving their atheistic beliefs. Why? Because if there's no God, then there's no right or wrong. There's no sin. There's no heaven. There's no hell. There's no punishment. There's no anything. Hey, do what you want. If it feels good, do it. That's what's going on. And it's only going, going to get worse. Psalm 42. Psalm 42. Verses 9 through 11. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me. While they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? That's what people are doing now. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, as we read earlier, who is the health of my countenance and my God. No matter how bad it gets, you should still praise God. And it gets difficult at times. You can find yourself starting to question this book and say, God, why are these people getting away with this stuff? Not even talking about the prosperity of the wicked. That's just always there, part of history. But where's the judgment? Lord, what do I need to do to help bring this judgment in? I, this is terrible. I heard now that they also, it's not just catalytic converter th you know, theft. Now they're doing a powertrain module theft as another one. This you know, fairly recent trend, I guess it's fairly recent. You know, it's getting really bad now. But they steal the powertrain module off of semi-trucks. And the semi-truck is sitting there and it can't drive. It won't run because there's chips in it and whatever else that are worth some money and things. So now it's just steal a bunch of powertrain modules off the trucks and because of the supply chain shortage we can't get new ones so they have these semi trucks just sitting all over the place yeah that's going to work out real good in terms of getting food shipped to the different grocery stores around the country just terrible but the thieves they could care less let's go rob and steal and whatever else the wrath of god come upon these thieves i'll tell you what psalm 119 go to psalm 119 Psalm 119, verse 139. Biggest, the biggest psalm in the entire Bible, and it's all about the Bible, the Scriptures. Kind of an interesting thing there. Psalm 119, one, verse 139. My zeal 
hath consumed me, because mine enemies have forgotten thy words. <laughs> uh, the enemies out there, I always point out this way, out towards the street, here where I'm recording this. The enemies out there in the world, they've forgotten the book. They've forgotten this blessed book here. And you know what it leads to? If you're a Bible believer, more zeal. You need to become more zealous. We'll get back to that here in a minute. Verse 4, 140. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Do you believe that this book here is pure? The King James Bible? Do you love it? Oh, you're a bibliolater or whatever. Take a hike. Go join with the heathen out there. Take your new versions or your Greek text or whatever else and get away from me. I don't want anything to do with you. You don't love this book and you don't believe that this book is very pure, then I am breaking fellowship with you. Stay away from me. Verse 141, I am small and despised, yet do, I, yet do not I forget thy precepts. <laughs> small and despised. Not many of us. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Amen to that. Trouble and anguish hath taken hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delights. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding, and I shall live. Going forward, brethren, the way that you're going to live, the way that you're going to survive, is to have understanding. And it has to be based on Scripture. Your God-given rights as defined in the Word of God. Right there. This is the way to go forward. Understanding. So that I can live. Okay, here's exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to give you the prediction. I have talked to an insider and he knows exactly what... There's no such thing. Okay? The insiders don't even know what they're doing in another month or two. It's based on we're going to try certain things and then... We'll see if it works, and if the people react a certain way, then we go this way. If they react, you know, that, then we go this, and that's what they do, right? The most high guys and whatever else, all that they can do is plan different things and talk about what would happen if we made a pandemic, what would happen if we made a cybersecurity attack, what would happen if we artificially engineer a famine, whatever else. They can't control everything. Again, remember, God is in control. God can use these wicked people, and He does. He uses them to punish the wicked. He uses the wicked to destroy the wicked, in other words. Um, certainly. But ultimately, nobody really knows what's going to happen. Nobody can really say that we have it planned down to the very, just whatever. You say, well, the Illuminati card game proves it. They, they show all these cards, and it shows the future. It shows different plans that they have. Little games, little little psyop type of stuff that they want to do, but they can't plan the outcome of it. They can't predict and say, okay, this is exactly what's going to happen. Brian Denlinger is going to do this as a reaction to that. They have no idea what I'm going to do. They have no idea what you're going to do. Please remember that. Don't give the devil too much credit. All right? We serve the living God, and he can come in and he can stop anything. Don't forget that. Don't, uh, what? Don't forget that. If you're saved, if you're born again, God hasn't forgotten you. Don't forget Him or His Word. Finally, let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Through the New Testament. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 14, remember what we read over there in Psalm 119, verse 139, my zeal hath consumed me, because my enemies have forgotten, you know, God's word, essentially. Revelation 3, 14, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Give you a little scenario here before we continue. 
Oh, how's a, what's America? America's the richest nation in the world. Richest nation out there. Okay. Um, is it real riches? No. Let's just do a little exercise here. Pull the plug on America. No electricity. Um, all debts must be paid back. All debts of any kind. Um, no food in the grocery stores. You have to grow your own. Make your own clothing. You, you just get down the list. How rich would America be? Uh, I think most Americans would end up uh, wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Wouldn't they? Yes, they would. What should you do, what should you do about it? Verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Hmm. Spiritual, in other words. Your only hope going forward is not gold and silver or storable foods or guns and ammo and the right connections and the spiritual spiritual as many as i love i rebuke and chasten be what zealous therefore and repent well repentance only happens at salvation you get saved you repent you turn from your old ways to your turn to your new no turn from unbelief to belief no repentance is is what happens all through your life it begins at salvation but it goes the whole way through your life but you have to be zealous as you see the lights starting to go out in the country, you shine your light even brighter. Okay? Say it this way. I have a little flashlight here, a little 4-7 flashlight. I've had this thing for so many years now. Here is the first level. Okay? Here's the second level. There's the third level. You see, pretty soon when that third level hits like that, you can't even see me anymore all that well. As my cameras, uh, you know, <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to be. As things get darker, you turn your light up even brighter. You get more zealous. Yeah, I've been kind of cowardly in the past. I think I'm going to start putting some bumper magnets on my vehicle. I think I'm going to start putting scriptures around my house. I think I'm going to start carrying my Bible in public. That'll get you some attention. <laughs> um, putting a t-shirt on that has a scriptures on it be more zealous my zeal has consumed me because these people are rejecting god's word i'm going to become even more zealous i'm not going to hide my light under a bushel and you know shut off the light shh, shh, shh. i'm right here i'm a christian i'm a bible believing christian i believe the king james bible is god's perfect word why because I don't want God to forget me. I'm not going to forget His Word. Understand? What do we get out of it? Verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Kind of an interesting thing. Here's the famine. And all of a sudden you hear a knock at the door you're in there singing praises to the lord and the lord comes in and says hey let's have some supper together they're all starving out there i forgot them but you remembered me you're singing to me here's some food to him that overcometh will i grant to sit with me in my throne even as also i over even as i also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. We're all part of the church of Jesus Christ out there. You're all little building blocks that make up the church. Um, listen to what I'm saying out there, churches. You get through this thing by putting your faith in Jesus Christ, by singing praises to Him. And as God forgets this nation and says, Okay, I'm done with America. I'm done with whatever other countries out there. 
Some of the countries are in Bible prophecy, certainly. I don't believe Canada or America is in Bible prophecy. There's no Western superpower. I think these two countries are, are just going to be wastelands and basically third world countries uh, in the not too distant future. But throughout Europe, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's plans. God has plans for the different nations over there. Um, but for those of us to get through what's coming, and we don't turn on the Lord, um, the Lord has a very great promise there. We have to overcome. And if we do, we'll, He'll grant to sit with Him in His throne. Um, it's kind of interesting because two of the disciples came to Jesus at one point, and you know the mother's there, and she says, "You know, I want my sons to sit. You know, one at your right hand, one at your left hand, or whatever." And he says, "No, it's not mine to give. I can't give you that right now. Some things need to be written out, and we'll talk about the end times then." And uh, oh, in the end times, now there will be some people that make it through what's coming, and it's going to be very difficult to do that. But the people that do, that overcome. God says, okay, come on up here and sit with me in my throne. Hmm. That's quite an award. You know what I mean? So, I hope and pray that God doesn't forget you because of your lax attitude towards the Word of God. Because you want to fit in with people. Because you just uh, can't trust the Lord to provide for you. I don't know how many of you are going to make it, to be quite frank with you. Um, some of you just don't take things seriously. Some do. Praise the Lord for you. But uh, we all need to be pretty rough on ourselves right now. And we need to, uh, you know, exhortation, yeah. But there's also rebuking and chastening. And uh, we're to be zealous. You know, zealous people have to be very um, tough on themselves. Uh, to be a real zealot, you have to give up things. Um, you have to have people making fun of you. Casting out your name is evil, separating you from their company. Are you willing to do that? There's been some zealous soldiers down through the years when uh, all the other soldiers are keeping their heads down, enemy fires coming at them, and a soldier finally has enough and says, I'm going to charge the enemy even if I get shot, even if I get killed. And he gets zealous. And he gets up out of the trench and he charges the enemy, yelling and screaming. That's a good picture of a Christian. Hey, um, you need to do certain things here. We're, we're passing laws. on No, no, I have a God-given right. My King James Bible says I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not doing that. Uh, no way. I don't care what you say. Were you some kind of fundamentalist, uh, fanatic fundamentalist or something? Yeah, I am actually. I'm, I'm, I'm beyond fundamentalist. Okay, Fundamentalist just as a few points and whatever. No, I'm a Bible believer. I believe this book is God's perfect word. I'm holding it in my hands right here. You understand that? I'm not just a fundamentalist. I accept the whole thing. <laughs> Forget the fundamentals of the faith, brother. I, I accept the whole thing. The supernatural stuff, all the miracles, everything. I accept it all. It's fact. Pure fact. I'll wear it on my body with shirts and whatever else and things and do as much stuff as I can. I'm not going to get a tattoo or something. That's wicked. But you know what I'm saying here. I'm going to put it on my clothing. I'm going to put it on my vehicle. I'm going to hang stuff on my house. I'm going to be as zealous as I can. Why? Because as God forgets this nation, as God forsakes this nation that I live in, wherever you live, I don't want him to forget me. There's some great promises in this book that I believe firmly, and I want to be able to get those promises. I want to be able to have those things. That means more to me than anything else, including my job, my relationship with whoever, family, friends, married people, husband, wife, whatever, my children, my grandchildren, whatever. I do pray that uh, you hold this book in the proper place in your life. I've seen so many people turn against this book over the years. 
you know, I'm just, I'm not some kind of just YouTube guy or whatever else that has a webcam and whatever, and I flick the videos on and that's, you know, I just run my mouth for a little bit of time. Um, I deal with people, a lot of people, in person, online, the whole thing, um, family members and whatever else that have turned on this book. I've had my heart broken so many times I can't, I've just lost count. And uh, you don't want to mock me or whatever else, go ahead. That's between you and God. But uh, I know a lot of you out there, you've been through some pain. I know. I've read your letters, talked to some of you. Um, it hurts. It hurts bad when uh, children say, we don't want our grandchildren, your grandchildren, to be around you because you're a bunch of fanatics. You're a bunch of zealots. We don't want that. I haven't done anything wicked or evil or vile. I'm not violent or anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You believe this book, we don't want our children to be around you. You could be transgendered, pedophile, whatever, wanting to poison the children. Oh, okay, we'll bring them over. You know, just sit them down and watch X-rated movies or something like that. But you get into this book, oh, no, you stay away from our children. No, stay away. It's bizarre. I mean, the stories I've read over the years and people have told me and things just unreal what members of the body of Christ go through. Um, wives that are afraid of their husbands. Husbands that are saying that my wife is cheating on me and doing all this stuff. I don't know what to do, brother. What am I supposed to do? Health problems. Financial problems. All that stuff. What should you do? Be zealous. As we see this country falling apart, as we see famine happening, as we see violence and whatever else, be that voice that sings praises to the Lord. Don't turn your back on God. I just need to say this. You're going to go through those times. I've been through them plenty of times where I start to look at this book and I say, you know what, God, you're not even following your word right now. I don't understand what you're doing. Like David God, why are you hiding your face from me? Did you forget me? Do you even think about me, Lord? Do you even care about what's going on in my life? I've been praying about this thing for years and it has not been answered and I don't understand. I don't understand. Do I even, should I even believe in this book anymore? When you get to that point, brethren, let me just encourage you with something very simple. Go back to the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Hmm. The heaven and the earth. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Is it true? What are the other options? It created itself? No. Uh, the world was created in all the complexity of nature and everything else, and the complexity of you and I and, and everything. It was all created by a random accident, some so many billions of years ago things exploded and here we are you know stupid stupid there is a god and the most logical explanation for god is in this book go back to that when you really get down and you start questioning the book you go back to that and you say all right lord i'm sorry i'm sorry for speaking against you i'm sorry for my my foolishness lord but i see through a glass darkly and i don't understand what's going on and lord God, please don't forget me. Don't forget about me and please don't forsake me. I see what you're going to do to this land and this land is deserves it. But God, what about me? David did it. King David. You will too. That's going to be it, brethren. And um, I pray that this message has been an encouragement and a challenge to you. It's been an encouragement, a challenge to me to go through the scriptures. And um, no matter what happens, no matter how rough our future becomes, brethren, hold on to this book. If you have to leave everything behind, if you have to run for your life, you take your book, you take your Bible. Don't ever leave it behind. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. 
King James Video Ministries is supported by Saved Brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.